this video, we're going to cover erection and ejaculation. We're going to break down the anatomy of the penis, the neuroanatomy and physiology of erection and how ejaculation occurs. So let's begin this lecture by breaking down the anatomy of the penis. If you have seen the lecture on the anatomy of the male reproductive system, then I'm sure you already know the anatomical organization of the male reproductive tract. So let's take a closer look at the penis here. So a quick review of the male reproductive tract anatomy. We have the scrotum here, the testes, epididymis, and vas deferens. Now the penis consists of three cylindrical compartments, vasculature masses known as erectile tissues. They're sponge-like and are bound together by fibrous tissue. The two compartments that run along the sides of the penis are identical. So these two here, and they are called corpora carbinosa, and they are contained within collagenous sheath called the tunica albuginea. And it's also surrounded by elastic fibers, collagen, and smooth muscle, which helps regulate blood flow. It also contains sinusoids, so small vessels for the passage of blood. They are functional erectile structures. And the third compartment is called the corpus spongiosum, and it's below the corpora carbinosa, and it surrounds the urethra and extends to form the tip of the penis. The sinusoids here are bigger than that of the corpora carbinosa. Now, let's talk about the vascular supply for a second. So the common penile artery has three distinct branches, which includes dorsal, cavernous, and bulbar urethral. So the dorsal artery supplies blood to the glands of the penis during erection. The bulbar urethral artery supplies the corpus spongiosum and the bulb of the penis, and the cavernous artery supplies the corpora cavernosa, and it branches out into the helicine arteries. And this one here is the deep dorsal vein. So now let's subtract complexity and go through erection. So erection is caused by parasympathetic stimulation, which results in the relaxation of the smooth muscle cells of the corpora carbinosa. Arterial flow increases, so the arteries that carry blood to the penis dilates, and blood is going to fill the corpora carbinosa, causing distension of the penis. There's going to be an increased resistance to outflow because the veins are being compressed against the tunica albuginea, so reducing the outflow of blood. And in the flaccid state, the spaces are collapsed and the tissues are condensed, so smooth muscle cells are contracting to allow small amount of arterial flow. And so the regulation of the smooth muscle cells of the penis is important in erection. So that's the structure of the penis composed of three compartments, two that are identical, which runs along the sides of the penis, corpora carbinosa, and below it is the corpus spongiosum, which is the third compartment. Now let's move on to the neuroanatomy and physiology of erection. Let's do a quick recap on the vertebral column first and the five different regions before we break down the afferent and efferent nerves. So we have the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx. And over here, this is the pedendal nerve, which we're going to talk about, and the pelvic nerve, pelvic nerve, and hypergastric nerve. Now, the penis has both somatic, so sensory and motor, and autonomic, parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation. The innervation stems from the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic involves the S2 to S4 fibers, and the sympathetic involves T11 to L2, which is responsible for vascular smooth muscle contraction. Okay, so let's talk about the afferent nerves first. The pedendal nerve is responsible for reflex erections, so it conducts sensory information from the genital and scrotal skin to the sacral cord, S2 to S4. And the scrotum also has lumbar sensory innervations, L1 and L2. And the penile skin and glands have a lot of free nerve endings. These nerves are responsible for receiving touch signal, pain, and temperature. And erection is caused by central afferent stimulation, so touch, 
audio, visual, smell, psychogenic, fantasy, and other stimuli that turn you on. And there are three types of erection. So there's nocturnal, follows REM sleep or rapid eye movement, reflexogenic from general stimulation, and psychogenic, so multiple stimuli. Now let's talk about the efferent nerves first. So parasympathetic neurons are located in the S2 to S4, the sacral spinal cord. And what happens is the efferent impulses are going to be conducted to the corpora cavi nursa through long preganglionic pelvic nerves and through short postganglionic non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic fibers, or NANC for short, N-A-N-C. And these NANC fibers, they are crucial in the reaction, okay? And they have a neurotransmitter called nitric oxide, NO. And we'll come to nitric oxide in just a second. Now, acetylcholine plays a role in parasympathetic nerve signaling, which is responsible for smooth muscle relaxation for erection to occur. It stimulates the release of NO, nitric oxide, by activating endothelial cell. So let's break this down. Let's break down how smooth muscle relaxation happens, how erection occurs, how the erectile tissues are filled with blood causing distension of the penis. Okay, so here's our smooth muscle cell, endothelial cell, NANC fiber, Nancy fiber, and a cholinergic fiber. And these are cavernous nerves. So acetylcholine is going to be released from the parasympathetic cavernous nerves, the terminal ends of these nerves, and it's going to bind to muscarinic receptors of the endothelium. And when it binds to this receptor, it's going to increase nitric oxide activity, which then cleaves arginine into nitric oxide. So here's arginine, and we're going to produce nitric oxide. And recall that NANC fibers, NANC fibers neurotransmitter is nitric oxide. So it's also produced by this nerve here. And the reactions are going to be similar to the nitric oxide secreted by ENOS or nitric oxide activity. So once nitric oxide is produced, it's going to activate a smooth muscle cell membrane bound enzyme called guanylyl cyclase. And this enzyme, is going to turn GTP to cyclic GMP, which is a secondary messenger that activates protein kinases. So once we've activated protein kinase, calcium channels are going to close, okay? So these calcium channels over here are going to close. So calcium levels decreases, and this is going to result in smooth muscle relaxation. Now, another second messenger is cyclic AMP, and it's produced via a G protein acting on adenylyl cyclase. And when it does that, ATP is going to come in here and be converted to cyclic AMP. And when cyclic AMP levels increases, it's going to trigger the activation of protein kinase, which is cyclic AMP dependent. And again, this is going to close calcium channels. And so systolic calcium decreases, leading to smooth muscle relaxation and erection occurs. And so the regulation of the smooth muscle cells of the penis is important in erection. And the systolic calcium regulates the relaxation and contraction of these smooth muscle cells. So by understanding these pathways, it allows us to understand why erectile dysfunction may occur, why ED may occur, and also further insight into the therapy for erectile dysfunction. Okay, so that is the erection state. That is how erection occurs. Let's now talk about how erection is inhibited, the flaccid state. And this is when the smooth muscle cell contract. So signals from the sympathetic nerves and endothelium activate smooth muscle cells of the penis. The nuclei of the sympathetic neurons are found in T11 to 12. So they have short preganglionic fibers and long postganglionic fibers that run through the hypergastric nerve. The pelvic plexus and the cavernous nerves to the corpora carbon nursa, where they inhibit erection. Let's break this down further. So in erection, acetylcholine mediates parasympathetic nerve signaling in inhibition, 
Norepinephrine mediates sympathetic nerve signaling. So here's an endothelial cell, smooth muscle cell, calmness nerve, and calcium channel because calcium regulates penile smooth muscles. So what happens is norepinephrine is released from the sympathetic carbonous nerves, the terminal ends, and it's going to bind to receptors on the membrane of the smooth muscle cells, okay? So look at these cute receptors here. And on the other hand, endothelium signaling is facilitated by endothelin and prostaglandin, which are also going to bind to specific receptors and activate the smooth muscle cells and activate a cascade of reactions increasing calcium levels. Now, once we've activated the smooth muscle cell, we're going to inhibit adenyl cyclase, which will decrease cyclic AMP, and it's going to open up the calcium channels again. And so calcium levels are going to increase, so calcium is going to enter here and increase systolic calcium levels. And calcium is going to bind to intracellular calmodulin. And we have ourselves a calcium calmodulin complex which is going to bind to myosin light chain kinase and this complex then becomes active and it's going to produce energy for cycling of myosin cross bridges along actin filaments. And so these smooth muscles will contract and your reaction is inhibited, leading to flaccidity, okay? And so that is how erection is inhibited. Now, before we move on to the next part of this lecture, which is ejaculation, let's quickly summarize what we've just covered. So erection is the result of parasympathetic stimulation and a decrease or inhibition in sympathetic signaling. The relaxation and contraction of smooth muscle cells regulates erection and the levels of systolic calcium. Now, when the smooth muscle cell relaxes, it leads to erection and acetylcholine mediates parasympathetic signaling and also facilitates nitric oxide release, which leads to a series of reactions that closes ion channels and relaxes the smooth muscle cells. On the other hand, when the smooth muscle cells contract, it leads to flaccidity, it inhibits erection, and norepinephrine mediates sympathetic nerve signaling, and endothelin and prostaglandin mediates endothelium signaling, which activates the smooth muscle cells, resulting in calcium channels opening up, leading to smooth muscle contraction. And that is the flaccid state. So now let's move on to the next part of this lecture, and that is ejaculation. So let's break down how this occurs. So we have the diagram here from the anatomy of male reproductive system lecture with the labels. So if you'd like a refresher on these organs and their functions, go watch that lecture and then come back to this one again. Now, ejaculation is the release of semen from the penis. Semen is made up of sperm and fluids from the seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands. These fluids are alkaline to neutralize the acidity of the male urethra and the acidity of the vagina, and it contains fructose because the sperm needs energy for its travels, one voyage boys, and also for lubrication. Now, ejaculation is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, primarily a spinal reflex mediated by afferent pathways from mechanoreceptors of the penis, and ejaculation time varies among men. Factors include arousal, penile sensitivity, psychological hormones. Ejaculation consists of two phases, emission and expulsion. The main organs involved are the epididymis, the vas deferens, the seminal vesicles, the prostate, the urethra, and the bladder neck. And so in the emission phase, the bladder neck is going to close because we don't want seminal fluid entering the bladder or any urine leaking out. And the smooth muscles of the epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts, seminal vesicles, and prostate are going to contract and empty the sperm and fluids into the urethra. Okay, so that is the emission phase. The bladder neck closes because we don't want any urine leaking out or any seminal fluids going into the bladder, and the smooth muscles of the epididymis, the vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts, seminal vesicles, and prostate are going to contract, and they're going to empty the sperm and fluids into the urethra. Now, the expulsion phase, 
This is right after that emission, and semen is expelled from the urethra. The semen is pushed out through the rapid and rhythmic contractions of the urethral smooth muscle and the skeletal muscle at the base of the penis. This is what's known as an orgasm. And after ejaculation happens, there's actually a period after where a second erection is not possible. Okay, so comparing ejaculation and erection, and to summarize the lecture, in erection, it's the stimulation of parasympathetic nerves and inhibition of sympathetic nerves. And in ejaculation, it involves sympathetic nerve stimulation of the smooth muscles of the duct system. So that is erection and ejaculation. In this lecture, we learned the structure of the penis, the vascular supply, the neuroanatomy and physiology of erection, how erection occurs. We learned how calcium regulates smooth muscle relaxation and contraction and how this leads to the erection state or the flaccid state. And we also talked about how ejaculation can be divided in two phases, emission and expulsion. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.